Hi, this is ET370, lecture 14. This is going to be a two-part uh, lecture. The first part, we're going to talk about incremental encoders, and the second part, we'll talk about absolute. So what are we going to cover for incremental? Well, we're going to look at an optical version, and we're going to look at this concept called quadrature, which is the, the fact that the pulses per revolution is going to be four times the counts per revolution. And we'll look at a little demo to really hopefully hit this home. Okay. All right, so first of all, what is an incremental encoder? Well, it's a sensor combined with a fast counter to measure either line linear distance or rotational angle, all right? And so there's two big types, two main types, uh, optical, and optical uh, has a moving slotted strip and uh, a fixed LED and photo detector setup. Now, a magnetic uh, uh, incremental encoder might have something like a moving magnet and a fixed hollow, a hollow effect sensor that counts pulses, kind of similar to your uh, bicycle, right? Where uh, as a pulse goes by uh, and you have a, or sorry, as a magnet goes by, you have a hollow effect sensor pickup and you can kind of count how many pulses. That's more for RPM, but the concept's the same. Oh, by the way, we will look at this. I actually have this here. Let's hopefully I don't knock out any pins. Here's an example of a optical one, and we will be looking at this later. Um, you can see that there's a, uh, a disc, and it's hard to see on, on the um, camera here, but there's a very, very fine lines of opaque and transparent along the edge. Who did that focus? Let me see if I can get that a little bit better. Okay, good, good. And then can I get a light on there? Oh, yes, okay. So you can see this very fine lines here. This has, actually has 2,500 um, counts uh, per revolution. So the CPR is 2,500 counts, all right? And this is where the photo detector and LED are. So there's two A and B, okay? So let me put this aside, this will come back. Okay, so what are some issues with an incremental encoder? Well, you must home the sensor at startup, right? So you don't know the absolute position. Right, you have to, once you start it up, it's always zero. And so that could be a problem. Um, so what do you have to do? You have to combine it with an absolute sensor, right? And in fact, what another thing we should mention for an incremental is you must have a fast counter, right? If your hardware, your electronics is not fast enough to count the revolutions as it goes around, you're gonna skip heartbeats, right? Okay, so let's look at a kind of a simple version. So imagine you have your moving disc, right? And you have clear and opaque sections. In this case, we'll have four. And uh, look at this, we have an LED here and it can shine through and you have a photo detector and we have two actually. And this is fixed, this is fixed, but the disc can rotate and move. And so this is a side view and a front view. So you can imagine you have the window here, you can, the photo detector can see the LED shining through, but when I rotate, let's say either clockwise or counterclockwise, it's gonna block the LED. And then this picks up either one or zero, depending on if it sees the LED or not. So let's assume when the photo detectors A and B see light, uh, they report a high or a one. Okay, now this might, the logic might be flipped flip depending on uh, your physical device and what the output is, but let's just say for this example, sees the light one. So in this case, I'm gonna see a one, one, right? Because the light shines through. Now, if I rotate it clockwise, I think you guys can imagine that the A is gonna get blocked. So one, one, as I rotate it clockwise, the A is gonna get blocked while the B will still be on. It'll still, still see the light. Now, if I keep rotating this, you can, I think you can imagine that both are gonna be blocked by this section, right? If I keep rotating again, then A is gonna now see the light because that window is gonna allow the light to pass, but B will be blocked. And then finally we get back to kind of the original state here where this window will now be uh, allowing the light to go through, right? And then the pattern repeats actually. So you get four unique positions per slot, right? And uh, it's basically the same pattern for A and B. It's just that there's a 90 degree, 90 degrees phase off, offset, right? So you get one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, but it's just shifted. Now, if you rotate it counterclockwise, what happens? We kind of get the same thing. If we start at one, one, 
And if I rotate it a, a little bit, I'll block B. And so B sees zero this time, and then A still sees one. I keep rotating, and then I get zero, zero, and then I get zero, one, and one, one. And I hope what you're seeing is that we get the opposite uh, sequence, right? Just a reverse sequence, but it's essentially the same idea where you have a 90 degree offset. So if you can count these, uh, or if you can identify these transitions, you can do two things. You can see how far you've gone. So that's where the incremental and incremental encoder comes in. And if you can detect the sequence, right? So if you know you went from uh, one, one to zero, one or one, one to one, zero, you would know if you went clockwise or counterclockwise. So you're getting two things, you're getting distance and direction, right? And obviously a count corresponds to the physical uh, layout of the slots, right? If you have more slots, one count uh, means that you've gone less distance, so you get more resolution, right? Okay, all right, so um, again, let's, let's just, I wrote down some things to note, right? So in this case, in this simple example, we have four counts per revolution. Right, so we'll use CPR, right? Now for each slot, there were four unique positions. So what does that mean? Well, the total pulses per revolution is four times this CPR, right? So that means that's gonna be 16, right? So in this case, um, in, in our example here, our PPR is equal to four times four equals 16. Okay, so we would have 16 total pulses per revolution for this specific incremental encoder. Okay, and that's kind of nice. There's a four times magnifier, in fact, right? So let's go to this US digital uh, uh, sensor here. So this guy actually has 2,500 counts per revolution on here which means if we use this formula, four times CPR, we actually have 10,000 points of uh, resolution around this, uh, around this disk. So we can measure with uh, 10,000 10, points, kind of crazy, right? And because we have these two uh, A and B signals. Okay, so let's break down how we would use this, right? So what we would do is we'd have our disk, we had our A and B channels, we would be getting a square wave signal offset by 90 degrees from pin A and pin B or, or the A and B to some pins on here. And you'd have your little Arduino microcontroller and this would, would be reading these pins really fast. And what the microcontroller can do is, I know we haven't gone over this in lab, but they could use this concept called interrupts. And interrupts are great because it doesn't matter where you are in your routine if it detects a rising or falling edge on this A or B channel, it will stop its program and go do what we call an interrupt service routine. And so we can detect a rising edge. And when we get, detect a rising edge, we can kind of perform some operation and increment a counter, right? A counter variable. Let's call this variable encoder or enc, right? ENC for encoder. And we can increment it or decrement it based on if we are going clockwise or counterclockwise. So now let's dive more into the details now that you kind of understand a big picture of what's going on. So what do we have? Incremental, incremental encoder, two signals, A and B. As the light is blocked and allowed, A and B see their square waves, right? These A and B are going to be fed into the Arduino, and then the Arduino is going to detect that rising or falling edge, and now we're going to do some math on it. Okay, so what kind of math are we going to do on this? Well, it's not very difficult. It's more logic-based, right? Um, let's, uh, let's kind of redraw those square waves that I had before, right? So, um, if I go back to this diagram, kind of have the one, zero, zero, one, right? One, one, zero, zero, one, one, same thing, right? One, one, zero, zero, one, one. So I'm just redrawing this right here. Okay. Let's try to work through this logic. Let's say we have an interrupt service routine and it detected an edge for A. Now that edge could have been rising or falling, right? Now let's say A is uh, rising. So let's look at two examples, okay? So in these two examples, A is rising, right? Now, if I know A is rising, and then if I look at the B channel, what happens? Well, if the B is low, we know that we must have been rotating clockwise. If we were rising and the B happened to be high, we know we were rotating in a counterclockwise fashion, right? So we have that written out. If B is low, right? 
B is low, we must have been rotating clockwise, otherwise we went counterclockwise. And so what we could do is we can increment the counter in one situation or decrement the counter in the other. Okay, good. Now, what if A was falling? What if we detect a falling edge on A? Okay, so we can look at three and four now. So if we detect a falling edge on A and if B is high, we went clockwise. And if B is low, we went counterclockwise. And so we can write this down, right? If A is uh, low and falling, if B is low, which is this one, we must have went clockwise, which we means we'll decrement. And if B is high, if we got a falling edge on A and B happens to be high, then we can see that went clockwise. Okay, so this would be an interrupt service routine only on A. Okay, now we can also apply an interrupt service routine on B. Okay, so now let's look at B. So let's say we are, uh, B is rising, right? We detected edge, B is high, which means we were rising. So now we look at the B channel. Where's a rising case? Okay, five and six, here we go. So if B is rising here, and if we look to A, if A is high, we must have gone clockwise. And if A is low, we must have gone counterclockwise. Okay, and we write that here. If A is low, right, here we go, clock counterclockwise, decrement the encoder. Okay, if A is high, which is six here, increment the encoder, that makes sense. And then the last one here, if B is low, so now we means B is uh, falling, so seven and eight here, so B is a falling edge. And again, we go to A now, so A is low, we went clockwise, and if A is high, we went counterclockwise, okay? Not too bad, right? You just have to logically break this down. But this allows us, these two service routines with these conditions in here, allow us to uh, detect both um, the counts, right? When we should count and if we should add or subtract to the encoder count. And remember, plus plus and minus minus is the same as encoder equals encoder plus one and enc minus minus equals encoder equals encoder minus one. All right, good. Okay, so then the next question is what happens when the encoder is greater than, in our case, 10,000 or the pulses per revolution? or if it's less than negative, the pulses per revolution. What happens when it becomes uh, 10,001, 10,002? Well, what if we wanna roll over? Well, did we learn anything about rolling over in a previous lecture or lab? I think we have. We can roll over using the modulus operator, right? Remember the modulus operator takes the remainder, right? And so once that value goes bigger than the, uh, the other variable on the modulus operator, we get a rollover. And so we can do this. We can define another variable called encoder modulus or enc mod equals the encoder modulus operator with the pulses per revolution. So once encoder surpasses the pulses per revolution, encoder mod is gonna start back to zero. And so it's gonna look like this. So as the encoder increases, once it grows, grows, it's one for one, right? Encoder mod and encoder are all the same, one for one slope. And then we get to here, once it passes, now the encoder mod is gonna roll back to zero and keep going, right? So this would be like zero to 360, then it goes zero to 360, zero to 360. If we go negative, it's gonna go negative. They're gonna be a one for one, but then once it goes to here, um, and I should actually put a negative pulses per revolution here, okay? Then the encoder mod will jump back to zero if this goes less than negative PPR, right? Like this, like this, okay? All right, so I wanna show you the code that I implemented. And these, this code here are the interrupt service routines. And I'm gonna zoom in here. Let's see if I can uh, zoom in, zoom, boom. Yes, excellent. So if we look at this interrupt service routine, notice that this interrupt service routine it is just implementing, actually I get it, zoom in a little too much. Interrupt service routine is just implementing this part here, okay? And so what does it say? It says, if it's high, and then look at this, it's, it's exactly, this is the pseudocode for this one. If high, I went clockwise, and if, if, if this is high, otherwise go counterclockwise, right? And decrement, okay? Um, what about over here? Um, uh, if it's low, then uh, this is the falling edge. And if B is low, then what happens if B is low, then I went counterclockwise, right? It's gonna be the same thing for the B level uh, interrupt service routine, right? So all this is, is an implementation of this guy here. Okay, what about the code? 
Um, the code is very simple in, or in terms of the main loop. So in the main loop, what you're gonna do is you can define um, two pins. We'll just connect it to pin two and three in your, on your Arduino. And so let me just bring this guy over here. Okay, good. So I'm connecting it to pin two and three, which is here and here, okay? And uh, I'm gonna def define a variable ink and an ink mod, right? And then an angle, so that way it spits out kind of a more intuitive number, right? And uh, I'm gonna define the pulses per revolution as 10,000 because of that quadrature equation. And so this is 25,000 times four, 10,000, great. Uh, I'm going to use our delay time and change time concept. I have our setup here. So I'm going to take these two pins, two and three, and make them inputs. And then I'm going to do something special. I'm going to attach interrupt. Now, zero and one on this attach interrupt function correspond to pins two and three, if you look at the Arduino day sheet. And then when we call this do encoder A, do encoder B, those are the two interrupt service routines that I mentioned before. Now the change means you can actually put rising, falling, change here. Change just means if you see any change on this, whether it's rising or falling, it'll go in and uh, go look at this interrupt service routine and do that, okay? Um, set up the serial monitor to see the number and millis. Now the loop is super simple. Notice I don't have to have any uh, recording of A and B. That's all handled in my attach interrupt, right? So what is this saying? It's saying if millis minus change time is greater than delay, we know what that does. Essentially it's saying is, every 100 milliseconds do this every 100 milliseconds roll over the encoder mod easy convert it to angle and print it out so simple here right okay and uh, notice this is just our conversion to degrees that's it right and because we have ppr is 10,000 three there's uh, 10,000 counts per rev uh 10,000 pulses per revolution this will convert that encoder mod to an angle that we know Okay, so let's uh, switch over to the uh, computer screen and let's see what's going on. So I'm going to go screen two and notice this is the same code right here that I just showed you. And I have the, uh, I have the disk uh, uh, moving. And so right now it's zero, zero. And as I rotate, watch what happens. So I'm going to rotate. Look, it's going negative. Notice how encoder is going to go once they're one to one, yeah. And then once I go past ten thousand here, notice the encoder goes to negative twelve thousand, but the encoder mod or modulus rolled over. And look at the angle, negative seventy-seven degrees. So if I get close to negative twenty thousand on encoder, so notice here I'm getting close to negative three sixty degrees, and this is uh, um, behaving as expected. Now I'm going to go back to zero, and let's see it flip to positive. There we go, we flipped a positive. I have eight degrees and encoder count of 240, 240 for encoder mod. And I'm gonna keep going up and up and up, okay? Now watch what happens as I transition closer 10,000 and, and beyond. I'm getting closer to 360 degrees and after I pass 360, boom, everything rolls over even though the encoder went past 2000, encoder mod went and rolled over and now the angle is 49 degrees, okay? So I hope this helps uh, helps you understand how an incremental encoder works with uh, a little demo here, okay? All right, um, I hope you learned something and you have a great day and, uh, or please stick around and watch the next lecture. All right, bye.